Hello there and welcome to the HI European Market Neutral monthly video for the month of December 2021. I'm Paul Marriage of Telworth Investments. This was another one of those on-off months. At the beginning of the month we were very concerned about the spread of the Omicron variant of Covid and therefore stocks that were good places to hide, defensive stocks um, went up and those travel stocks and perhaps the reopeners went down. By the end of the month we were less concerned about Omicron, you can see that in the, the relatively modest level of tra travel restrictions globally uh, as people began to get more comfortable with it. This is a very interesting trend because people are either more comfortable with it because perhaps it is milder, as some of the reports have seen, or that perhaps we're just learning to live with COVID variants. And the latter could be quite a good thing. And I think that might be quite a big theme in, into the second half. Developed governments probably can't afford too much more COVID support. Uh, and they probably want to to be able to let economies trade through this. And if the stock market gets their head around that, that's probably a good thing. So for us, travel names were quite important. A couple of our travel shorts were pretty strong. That was quite difficult, but clearly some of our travel longs were also pretty positive. So things like Airbus and Jet2 had good months, you know, while WH Smith on the short book or on the beach had a more difficult time. Our kind of standout pain, uh, probably if we're being honest with ourselves, was Domino's Pizza. Domino's Pizza settled a long-term dispute with its franchisees in the UK um, this month, uh, and that had been part of the bear case for quite a while, frankly. So, so solving that, even though it was expensive for the company, uh, into you know the beginning of the month environment where people probably saw it as a lockdown winner was was quite bad news really overall. The shares rallied quite strongly, uh, and that was a bit of a hit uh, to the fund uh, to the short book clearly. Uh, and we've tried to move on from that position a little bit. It's definitely de-emphasised it, de-risked it. Uh, and, you know, jury's out as to whether that has a, a position in the portfolio going forward. Uh, the winners for us, you know, I, I think it's been one of those months where initially places are high were great. So Oxford Instruments, you know, high quality business. People compare it to a Spirex and a Sarko or a Halmer in the UK um, or maybe a Schneider or something like one of these long term growth businesses. It's much smaller than those companies. It's more of a mid cap. It's got not got quite the record, but maybe it will do in the future. So so it's on 30 times there on 45, 50 times earnings looking forward. Maybe um, it can close the gap by delivering. It's, it's a niche player with, with a lot of IP and some pretty exciting technology areas. So it's been a really strong performer this month, I think, as people are getting more confidence in its ability to deliver earnings growth. So, so that, that's definitely been a positive for us uh, uh, during the month as well. Uh, so, you know, a month or two halves, a bit of a mix. Airbus has been good in terms of that kind of travel winner. Um, we've also done well in Balfour Beatty in the UK, which probably is more of a reopener, more of a value play. But the great thing about Balfour Beatty, if anything, it was a bit of a balance of the dominoes for us in, in that Balfour Beatty um, settled with the Department of Justice in the US, uh, a long running dispute going back to uh, almost a decade ago over some contracts with US defence housing. Sold that, it's cost them a bit of money, probably no more than people thought. Uh, but again, it's closing the book on some bad news and will hopefully let people focus on a share, which is pretty low, you know, a, a low, low multiple, probably around 10 times forward earnings, 10, 10 percent earnings growth, quite strong free cash flow yield, growing dividend, quite a lot of attractive things, particularly in the UK, where we'd expect infrastructure spend to go up. Uh, and it's well placed for that, being one of the major UK players. Uh, and we think that it'll start, you know, it's a contractor, it's never at a really high valuation, but we think at least uh, is more investable now. So that's been a strong performer for us. So as usual, a month where the stock picking was important, we had to navigate that washing machine a bit. We've come out just about positive and we've had a better Q4 for the fund overall, I think. Uh, and, you know, this has been a pretty tough year to make money. Uh, we've done that for you. We haven't made a bucket. We haven't made an awful lot. And we feel the momentum generally in the fund, the stability, the change in strategy during the mid-year really has worked well for investors, bringing that UK, the larger cap UK strategy, which, which is working well for us. Uh, into the strategy and being a little bit more selective with a smaller European book. That's done well overall. So let's hope that continues into 22. We do think there's a lot of value still in the UK in 22, and we think it'll be a stock pickers market more in Europe and probably globally. So, so we're feeling quite confident as we go into next year, and we wish you all a very happy new year. Thank you for your support this year, and we look forward to continuing to deliver for you in 2022. Thank you.